Hello again, uh, this is part 4 of chapter 10 and we are explaining the fractional reserve system. Remember we said that uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, accounting identity. Accountity identity applies for all members of the society. So it applies for Accounting identity applies for all the members. This is household uh, firms. So we call them public and then banks. By banks, I refer to commercial banks and the central banks. Okay. Let's see how it works. Let's assume that we have the central bank here, central bank. Then we have commercial banks. For the sake of simplicity, we um, we compile them in one balance sheet. So there is one balance sheet for the central bank, one balance sheet for commercial banks, and there is public. So general public. So this is both households and firms. Households and firms. So let's uh, pick up at least Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali has, he's, he's got a company, okay? So Mr. Ali, we already told you that he's got some cash. Let's call it C1. And uh, he's got some demand deposit, we call it D1. And he's got some um, some securities or savings S1, and he's got some other other one, and he has borrowed some money L1, and he's got some equity or net worth Y1, and then we can go to a typical typical uh, individual. Then we are using same thing, C I, D I, uh, S I, and O I, and here it's got liability I, and uh, say equity I. Okay, so we have, uh, we can ask them to show us their balance sheet at certain point. Okay, that's let's assume it like that. So Mr. Ali will tell us that I have like hundred dollar cash, I have two hundred dollar as the deposit, I have like five hundred uh, bond and a uh, hundred other. So this is becoming like nine hundred. Okay, nine hundred dollar. And here it says that I have borrowed 200 as the loan and 700 is my own money. So I'm, I've, it's created by my own money. So this is also 900 and this is balance. And every typical person also like. So we are using the I. I goes from one. So Mr. Ali is number one. And this can go to number N. So we have N population. It's like... Um, in individual firms or households, okay? So this is the N, is the population, maybe. Population of households and firms. Not the population of population. Because babies doesn't have account. But we have, for every uh, few person, if the family has uh, its own uh, balance sheet, 
the companies have their own balance sheet. Let's assume that we have a typical a typical uh, firm or family has got something like this. When it comes to the banks, uh, the deposits the deposits are deposited in the bank, but not cash. Cash is in the pocket of the you and me, but deposits are appearing here. So the D is if we have one bank in the town, let's assume like that. This is going to be DI. I goes from one to N. So everyone has deposited their money into the bank. So the total amount, if if we have uh, one thousand person and each person has got on average two hundred, so it becomes uh, two hundred thousand worth of deposit into the bank. Okay, and this is main liability. Why I put it in the liabilities? Because uh, by by putting their deposit into the bank, bank owes them. Banks owes them. Okay. And uh, so this is the liability side of the commercial bank. And by holding that, they have reserve. So D is for deposits. R is for reserve. Reserves is not necessarily needs to be equal to the deposits. Reserves are always smaller than this and there is something called reserve ratio so r divided by d is called reserve ratio reserve ratio and depending on what would be this ratio some part is being dictated by the central bank it's called required reserve ratio required reserve ratio required reserve ratio or triple r maybe the banks are holding more than required reserve ratio so that we, we come to that and the other part is the loan loan and maybe the other from the bank and the uh, they might have actually loaned from the central bank if they borrow from the central bank that's the debt so this is called discounted loan and then the other uh, sorry, E. Uh, equity of the bank. So both sides are going to be equal. Let's say this was, uh, I just simplified, 100,000. And this is, uh, this is 500. And this is uh, the loan they have given to people. So all together, sigma li, sigma li, i goes from 1 to n. If, if all the loans are borrowed from the banks, and let's assume this is, uh, say, um, 400. And the reminder is, uh, they maybe this is 0, and this is also 0, negligible. Negligible. And hence, they have also 100 other assets. So altogether, this is 1,000. And this is also 1,000. And this is balance. And uh, the, the reserve ratio here for this example, the reserve ratio is 500 divided by 1,000. So it is 0.5 or 50%. But what is the required reserve ratio? Required reserve ratio is the dictated by the central bank. So maybe the required reserve ratio would be 20%. So the re, uh, now they have a reserve which is higher than what is uh, re required by the uh, central bank. And the reserve is basically, it's a money which they deposit with the central bank. So reserve is appearing here. And then the banks is printing the money. The banks are printing all this cash, which is in the hands of the people, is sigma ci, i goes from 1 to n, is the money in the circulation. In, it's not in the banking sector. The money, the deposits is in the banking sector. The C is outside the banking system. So that is the C. 
and then they have some gold some securities and some other assets and sometimes if they give discount loan this is discounted loan is their assets for the bank okay and that's how it looks like so if this is let's say 1000 and the equity of central bank let's say negligible and the both sides should be 1500 1500 it's balance it's balance and now if something happens in somewhere uh, it may affect only one person it may affect the person and the bank it may affect the person's bank uh, balance sheet uh, commercial bank's ba balance sheet and the central bank balance sheet at the same time so the book is not explaining in this way but i i assure you that if you know the uh, balance sheet you would uh, perfectly understand how the uh, banking sector works so there's an example of the federal reserve and there is a, a typical balance sheet of a particular bank so central bank has their own balance sheet and the firms have their own balance sheets and etc etc um, here the reserves is defined reserves is the deposit the reserves is the deposit uh, that a bank has at the federal reserve so this this reserve is the asset for the bank but because they are holding it with the central bank it becomes a liability for the central bank similar to the deposit which is their asset but it's the liabilities to the commercial banks etc and required reserve ratio i i defined it it's a percentage which the central bank says that you must at least hold 20 percent of the deposit as your required reserve so if it is bigger than the required reserve so if the required reserve is 20 percent so rr is going to be 20 percent multiplied by 1000 so it is basically how much 200 right 200 is the required reserve but the actual reserve the actual reserve is 500 so uh, we can use this actually actual reserve with a actual reserve actual reserve is equal required reserve plus what is called excess reserve so excess reserve is something which is beyond the required reserve is hold so if this is 500 actual reserve and 200 excess reserve so this bank has got 300 they can use this to give loan to give loan to public okay that is that's the way it it works in the uh, banking sector but the moment they give the loan they are creating some fictitious account or not fictitious some demand deposit and deposit into their bank account so the loan generation of the loan is increasing the deposits of the people so this is how the virtual money source of source of virtual money because the moment the loan is being given loan is going to be equivalent of new deposit and the new deposits is going to be affecting the money supply as we are going to shortly show so required reserve a percentage of total deposit that a bank must keep as reserve at the federal reserve uh, if the bank goes below its required reserve the central bank actually uh, either punishing it by giving it a loan and charging the discount rate for that loan additional loan or the commercial banks have to go and find another banks to borrow and then they pay them uh, interest for uh, being short in required reserve this is a ex typical example uh, shown in the uh, book so the amount of liabilities deposits is 100 net worth is 10 
So the total asset is 110. So the T account is being shown like this. T account, T account. Okay. So you see that these are balance. So this bank has got $20 million worth of reserve and 100 worth hundred million dollars worth of deposits and he has it they have given 90 90 million dollars and together the assets worth 110 and uh, out of which uh, hundred dollar is their liabilities to their customers liabilities to their customers so if the required reserve ratio triple r is 20 percent is 20 divided by 100 is exactly 20 percent so this bank has no excess excess reserve so he's been also it's called that the, the bank is been loaned out loaned out it means that there is no further money that this bank can give the loan it's already uh, the magnitude or the amount of reserve is exactly equal to that 20 percent so this bank cannot even give one single dollar additional loan so excess reserve as i just said excess reserve is the actual reserve minus the required reserve required reserve is a deposit um, required reserve is the deposit multiplied by required reserve ratio required reserve ratio which has been determined by the central bank so if this is thousand this is 20 percent so it's a required reserve is uh, determined and the actual reserve we, we can see it from the balance sheet and then we could say that whether or not they have excess reserve and the moment the loans are converted into deposits the new money is going to be created so we are going to show it in two distinct example example number one example number one there is only one single bank in the town so we start from the panel uh, panel here so let me see if i can copy this and drop it here yes i did and I make it a little bit larger so you can see it clearly. So we start from uh, the panel one. The panel one, the bank has just opened, just opened. Okay. So how much liabilities? Nobody has deposited money. And how much reserves? Remember that in the balance sheet, the asset plus liabilities plus equity if something happens in this side this increase equal amount should be increasing here or alternatively if an increase happens here a decrease happens here the asset remains the same uh, let me give an example let's say asset is 1000 and liabilities are uh, 800 and uh, equity is 200 so this bank is 1000 asset fourth of both sides imagine that somebody comes and withdraw uh, its money so this is the deposit a liability somebody withdraw 100 dollars withdraw so what's going to happen it's going to be this is reduced $100 becomes 700 and instantly this is also coming down by the same amount $100 so it becomes $900 so this becomes 900 and this is 700 plus this is becoming 900 so this is asset is shrinked if the money has been taken out if a new customer comes a new customer comes now I show it with the green so a new customer deposit plus 200 dollars 
so it was it was 100 700 now this is increasing to uh, 900 and uh, instantly this this is also increasing by uh, 200 becomes uh, 1100 okay so one 1000 this is increased by one uh, 200 becomes 1100 and 900 plus 200 is exactly equal so this is also increased by uh, 1100 so if something happens uh, the uh, it's going to be offset in accrual system accrual accounting system always this a is going to be equal l plus a because if something happens additional things will happen somewhere else and that is the beauty of the accrual system and here we are in panel panel a the bank has just opened and now people have deposited hundred dollar instantly the reserves is increasing by uh, hundred dollars but the required reserve ratio let's say is 20 percent so this bank actually can hold twenty dollar and give eighty dollars loan okay but that $80 loan, so the loan, the loan is X. And that X is going to be added here. Okay. So if the $80, again, you will calculate, you see it, there is a, a additional excess, excess reserve. So initial excess reserve was $80. Because this is 20%. Initial extra excess reserve is $80 but the moment $80 has been added as a deposit to some customers more customers is coming so the bank will be loaned out as long as 100 divided by 100 plus X is going to be equal 20% and solve it for the X X is going to be 400 so this is the maximum maximum amount of loan which the banks can give and once the loan is been given uh, so 400 and uh, 100 plus 400 is 500 so the total deposit increases to 500 and this is 500 and this is 500 it's going to be balanced so you we notice that if the central bank says you are not allowed to let your reserves to be less than 20% of your deposit. So you keep watching 100 divided by 100 plus X is bigger than or, or equal to this. Cannot be become smaller than this. So if you make the equal and solve it, it will give you the maximum amount of the loan. This was easy. The case of only one bank. The only one bank, the maximum virtual money which is going to be created uh, is going to be uh, the maximum amount of deposit is going to be 500, not more. Now let's move to another example. And we have multiple banks. So I will copy this and bring it here. And make it larger so as you can see in the video oops okay so we have bank one bank two and bank bank K so it's keep going on and on this is the panel two of the previous example so people deposited hundred dollars instantly it increases to hundred reserve this bank has a required reserve is 20 and excess reserve is 80. So let's create $80 loan. So it will give $80 loan and $80 deposit to, to the customer number one, $80. So it's become 180, 180. This is balance. 
Now the first customer who's got the loan of 80 withdraws the money. So this is going to be minus 80 and this is going to be minus 80 and uh, this becomes 100. 180 minus 80 is 100 and 100 minus 80 is 20. Is required reserve ratio is fulfilled? Yes. 20 divided by this. So this bank one is loaned out. But imagine that the person has withdrawn $80 and this $80 is going to be deposited into second bank. So this is Mr. Ali who borrowed the money from the bank one, $80, and the bank cannot give more loans because it's already 20% of the deposit. But additional money is in the hand of Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali used this and go and buy something or deposit into the second bank, okay? And the moment it deposits into the second bank, reserves exactly uh, equally increases. That was the rule because this needs to be balanced. And now let's see what is the required reserve here. Required reserve is 20% of this. So it's $16 and excess reserve is $64. So this is similar story as like this. So this bank can give additional, uh, F, you can use its excess reserves and give the loan to second person, Mr. Mohsen, for example. So $60 loan and the 80 plus uh, 64 becomes 144. Okay. And Instantly that that 80 also comes here again. So 80 plus 64. This is balance Now the mr. Mohsen is taking out $64 of his loan So it means that this is going to be minus 64 and this is going to be minus 64 Okay, so 80 minus 64 is 16 the required reserve and uh, 144 minus 64 is 80. So 16 divided by 80 is exactly 20%. Required reserve ratio, 20%. So this bank is also loaned out. This is now loaned out. But the new money goes to the third bank. And this process continues. So the table here is showing that the initial loan the first loan is 80, the second loan is 80% of that is 64, and then the next one is the 60% of that is this, and will go on to infinity, to infinity. And the amount of deposits, the initial deposit was 100, and the second deposit uh, newly generated is 80% of that, $80. And the third deposit is the 80% of this 80%, which is $64, and go on and on. So the, the total loan is 80 plus 80% 80 of 80 plus 80% 80 of this becomes 80 is uh, 0.8 square multiplied by 80 plus again 80% of this becomes 8.8 cube multiplied by 80 and keep going on. How much would be this which is 400? It's easy to calculate because I can multiply both sides by minus 0.8 this becomes minus 0.8 multiplied by 80 this becomes minus 0.8 square multiplied by 80 this becomes minus cube cube multiplied by 80 and uh, minus 0.8 to the power 4 which is appearing here actually 80 and then add them both sides together add them both sides together so this becomes 1 minus 0 0.8 80 
L, which is L is unknown. I'm going to calculate. And look at the, the right hand side. This offsets this because this is positive, this is negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative. They're all going to be offset. And the only thing remains is 80. Therefore, the loan is going to be 80 divided by 0.2, 1 minus 0.8. This is exactly 400. So it doesn't matter whether we have only one bank in the town or millions of banks, the maximum loan, the maximum amount of loan is not going to exceed 400. How about the deposit? The deposit is also the same formula. D is 100. The second generated deposit, it's 0.8 of 100. Plus 80% of this becomes a cube. Plus a square, then cube. then to the power four, etc., etc. So we can, we can use the same logic that the D is going to be the first component, 100, initial deposit, divided by one minus that. So it is 0.2, and that is 500. 500, the total deposit maximum would be 500 and in single bank was 500 in multiple bank is also 500 so this is the uh, rule of thumb this model is known as simple model although it's a little bit simple model more sophisticated model is uh, where we are um, the assumptions underneath this is that uh, all loans are redeposited all those 80 64 16 they are going to be redeposited back to the banking system so all the loans become deposits and loans can loans can become cash or deposit if they become cash then this factor is going to be smaller this factor is going to be smaller so that is uh, in some other textbooks it's been explained uh, but the assumptions assumptions of simple uh, simple uh, models um, is that a all loans are redeposited B, all banks will be loaned out. It means that their excess reserve tend to become zero. Or reserve deposit is exactly equal required reserve ratio. That, ratio. that reserve divided by deposits is exactly equal required not uh, r over d become bigger than required reserves they have some excess reserve so this are loaned all of them loaned out and um, c uh, beat one bank or multiple bank multiple bank the results are the same and the results is that initial the maximum deposit is initial deposit deposit divided by required reserve ratio so that is going to be the solution and one over required reserve ratio is called money multiplier money multiplier in our case 1 over 0.2 is 5 
So that's why the initial deposit was 100. So one, uh, 100 multiplied by 5 is become maximum loan. Maximum loan is initial loan. That $80 divided by 0.2, which is uh, 1 divided by this is 5 multiplied by initial loan. So 5 multiplied by 80 is 400 is the maximum loan. So this is the formulation and it's very simple. We call it uh, money multiplier as the 1 over required reserve uh, ratio. So I will stop it here and the next one we will uh, briefly explain a little bit about the central banking system and uh, although the book is talking about uh, United States but I try to uh, talk more general so we are not asking you to memorize what is related to the United States. Thank you.